All right, so last night I tried to shoot the Dark Shark Nebula. Um, it's LDN1235, I believe it is. Uh, it's like 650 uh, light years away. Yeah, 650 light years away from Earth. Um, and it is one of the most difficult targets to capture in the night sky. It's a dark nebula, there's no color, and the contrast, uh, between the contrast and the seeing conditions and uh, if there's any moonlight, you may not capture it all. You can't see it with binoculars. You can't see it with the naked eye. It's really difficult to see with a telescope. So what I did last night was is I used the 11 inch RASA and I used the uh, 130 APO uh, from ZWO. Uh, the native focal length of this telescope is 1000 millimeters in focal length, but I put the 0.7 times reducer on it and it brought it down to 700 uh, focal length. The native length of the RASA is 620-ish millimeters, and um, so I just it just stayed at that. Uh, I used two different cameras, the uh, ZWO uh, ASI 2600 uh, MM Pro on this one with a Optolong 2-inch luminance filter, and on this scope on the ZWO uh, uh, APO, I used the ASI 2600 MC Pro, the one-shot color camera with no filter. And this particular telescope here, I shot uh, at 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes uh, for each exposure. So that's six, uh, 600 seconds, I believe. Yep, 600 seconds for the exposures on this one and 300 uh, seconds exposure, which is five minutes per exposure on this one for a total of like, it was three hours and some change, three hours and some change. I think it was 22, exposures on this one 22 uh 40 45 exposures on this one yeah 45 exposures on the rasa and 22 ish on the zwo now i was in a rush to try to get this done um, i had issues trying to get the um the the camera to adapt um actually not to adapt but how to get it uh, mounted to the reducer um the reducer goes up inside the telescope and uh, i didn't have another filter drawer to make the, uh, I think it's M40, M54 to M48. I think it's one of those, or M42 to M48 adapter. Either one, I didn't have it for the uh, filter drawer. So I had to put some spacers in here and guesstimate the back focus on it. But luckily on the APO, you don't need to worry about back focus. You just gotta get it close and it works. So then uh, out of great haste, I fired this one up, got it polar aligned, and I was able to start live stacking. And I could barely make out, barely make out the head of the shark. I had to adjust the histogram on the uh, ASI Air. Uh, this one, I couldn't even see it at all. I just you know, turned it on and it started tracking and it started taking pictures. But what I forgot to do, which was a huge failure on my part, was the framing. I didn't notice what the framing was on this particular telescope. So let's just say the framing was like this, a perfectly, you know, level frame. Um, and it started, I didn't, I didn't uh, look at the azimuth, I didn't look at the rotation angle, nothing. I just started taking pictures. And I went over to this one and I did the same thing, but I didn't look to see what they were. So the RASA turned out to be like this. And the APO turned out to be like this. Huge failure. However, it still was a great photo because what I did was is once the two were done, uh, I imaged them in, uh, in fixed in sight and then I uh, used star alignment to combine the two photos. But um, unfortunately, when you have a photo like, like this and then you change it to this, it I had to crop a lot of the picture out. So instead of having the entire shark body, you've got a good portion of the head of the shark. So it was a huge failure on my part, but it turned out great. It was uh, just over seven hours of total exposure time, um, combining two different telescopes, two different cameras uh, with two different focal lengths. Uh, it turned out great. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Here is the Dark Shark.